Also YouTube, Dara here from Zephyr Games, and we are with Danny. And everyone has been asking for this deck profile, so I'm sorry it's taken so long. It's been hard to pin Danny down, but um, this is his Buster Blade deck profile. So without further ado, we're going to crack straight into it because we know how much you lot really, really want to see what he puts in this. Even as a matching Buster Blade amount as well. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, yeah, so here's the Buster Blade uh, deck. I did, I will say one thing though, I did play a Brilliant Fusion Engine at one point and it was a fast deck. It was great, but it could clog easily. So this deck is a bit more of a slowdown and probably a bit more of a uh, stall deck just to stop people. Um, so without further ado, three Buster Bladers. Oh, what more can I say? There's always a need for three Buster Bladers. Uh, one Buster Blade of Destruction Swordsman. Um, some people try and play it more, more than one. I've found it can be a bit, a um, little bit cloggy. Um, just, cause, just because of his effect, only making him Buster Blade on field and grave. Um, you can search him from deck, and there are ways of getting him in grave, and I do do that, but um, the one is more than enough. Three, a Buster Whelp. This is your main search card. He is, and he is your main summoner for. Buster Blader from Hand or Grave um, is just fantastic. He's a tuner. He goes into everything you need, and yeah, he, I, I, this is just a brilliant card. I then also play three Dragon Buster Destruction Sword. Um, for those of you who play the deck, you know how good this card is. For those of you who don't, um, all the Destruction Sword whelps. Um, can equip from hand. This one, when he's equipped to your Buster Blader, uh, um, stops your opponent accessing their extra deck. So great against Pendulums, great for anyone who's XYZ heavy or even Synchro or Fusion heavy. Um, just completely locks him down. Uh, he also can be special summoned from the equipped position to the field, giving you a level one tuner. So once you do that from your Buster Blader, tune's going to your Buster Dragon, or if you've already got a Buster Dragon ready on field and you want to go into something else, there are plenty of other options for a rank for a level eight. Uh, for the rest of the whelps, I play one Robot Buster and one Destruction Sword Wizard. Um, I only played one of each for now. They are great cards, they are pretty damn good, um, but I find one is enough just for my, my personal taste. This one can increase his, uh, your Buster Blader's attack by a thousand when removed. Um, while equipped though, it, um, Excuse me. Um, it negates uh, spell and trap cards that are already face up on the field, uh, and on your opponent on your opponent's side of the field. Sorry, sorry. Any field card, any pendulum monsters, any face up trap cards like anti spell. This comes out, negates them straight away. Dark magical circle. Dark magic circle as well. Um, <laughs> and then uh, wizard um, stops effects that activate in the graveyard while the crit to a buster blader. So it's a nice little lockdown. Navigation. Navigation, indeed. Free Sage of Eyes of Blue. Obviously, people are always going to see this in a Blue Eyes deck, but it is very good for searching out your uh, your main Buster Whelp. Um, and then I, uh, you'll see later on that I do play Mausoleum of White as well. So if you can pull that, this, you can go straight into your Buster Blader plays, um, and obviously it's an extra tuner to go straight into your Buster Dragon, for example. Uh, I play three Lord Guy of the Fierce Knight. Um, this card has been fantastic when playing the actual deck. I must thank Joe of Zephyr War Games for this one. Um, so, level seven, so great going into your um, Buster Dragon, etc. Um, so, you can special summon him if you control no monsters and your opponent does control them. And if your opponent special summons a monster to their side of the field, you increase his attack to 3,000. So, he's a great beat stick, but then he's also a level seven. Um, so, but not only can you, you do your synchro plays, um, if you have him and your Buster Blader, you can go into rank sevens. So it's a little rank seven engine as well. And then I play two Max C and two Effect Veiler. Um, this was just something I thought, you know, quite a lot of the time I will have these in a side deck, but I decided to play them in the main deck for this one. And these have obviously been fantastic. Just for a little bit of extra speed, like I said, it's a stall deck, but just to get you to a few extra cards, that has been fantastic. And Effect Veiler, well, as you know, Effect is great, but you can also be searched with Sage. So if you're already pretty well set up and you want to summon your Sage, you can get that to hand and get ready. I then play one King of the Swamp for my fusion materials. Um, I'll show you one main fusion that I like to use with this one for the particular reason, but just the one of. And then King Caboyo. 
Um, so King Koyo brings back a level one monster from your graveyard. So, you know, you go, you can bring back your whelp. You can bring back your uh, Dragon Buster Destruction Sword. And you can use their effects and go off. So it's just a nice little play. Um, but if you do bring back certain cards, you do get an extra fusion monster out of it, which we'll see in due time. Spell cards. I play two Emblem of Dragon Destroyer. Um, I did play at three at one point, um, but I did find that uh, just certain other cards were needed. Um, you can play three. I would probably consider going back to three, but for now, at the moment, the deck the way it is, um, two seems to be fine. Uh, I play two cards of Continents, because not being funny, having your Whelps in Grave isn't an issue. Um, obviously, you do want your main searcher ready, but after that point, having them ready to get through your deck a bit more, it's great. Play one Mausoleum of White, and one Terraforming. Obviously, get your, like I said earlier, Sage of White, get your additional summon, and you can go off in your Buster Plays. Uh, the one upstart, um, once again, like I said, it is a stall deck. I do seem to be showing you quite a few draw cards, but it's not a major issue if you don't come across them, because like I said, you just gotta stall them out. Foolish Burial, um, great for putting certain whelps to grave, or even your Buster Blade Destruction Sword, because as I said earlier, once he's in grave, he becomes Buster Blade and the cards all work with him. I play two Twin Twister, and I play one of the Destruction Swordsman Fusion. Um, I have considered bumping it up, um, but like I said um, earlier for certain other cards, having um, the one-off seems to be doing well at the moment. Um, and it is a quick play. You can get it back from your grave by discarding any card. Um, so it is a great card. The one of is great for the moment. Onto the traps. I play one Destruction Sword Flash. Uh, this card I thought was good, but once I started playing it, I realized just how good it is. So I'm probably going to increase how many I have of these. But if you could draw a future monster, this Buster Blader as its material, um, you can banish all your opponent's monsters from the field. Um, it's secondary effect while it's in the grave. Uh, any cards that target Buster Blade, the mon monster or monsters, you can remove this from grave, negate the effect and destroy the card. Insane, I'll probably bump it up to two. The most recent addition to the deck, Destruction Sword Memories. Such a good card. Discard the Destruction Sword card and special summon a Buster Blade, the monster from your deck. Straight off the bat, you pull out one of your big beat sticks. You, it, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but its secondary effect is one that I love doing. Um, while, it, while it's in Grave, you can remove this card from Grave, remove a Buster Blader and a Dragon type monster from Graveyard to go into your big fusion monster. Um, the amount of times that this has saved me um, has been fantastic. Um, it's just such a good card. It, Minimum of two. I'm probably going to bump it up to three, to be perfectly honest. Because um, you need to discard the Destruction <laughs> Sword card to activate it, so you can discard itself, and then you've, but then you've got a couple in Grave ready to go for their secondary effect. Last two traps, a strike and a warning. Um, at the time, I didn't have the three strikes, like um, you saw in my previous deck profile. So this is literally what I played last. Um, I would consider bumping up the strikes, just because they've been so helpful in my other decks, but um, at the moment, like I said, once again, the deck works pretty well. For my extra deck, Free Buster Dragon. It, in my opinion, this is a must. Free Buster Dragon are fantastic. Um, it's easy to get Free Buster Dragon out in one turn, um, which I've done near, probably nearly every game that I've done. Um, some people might ask why if they haven't played the deck before. Um, getting three of them out is fantastic. You get their effects. They're level eight, so you can play a rank eight engine as well. Um, the effect is, while they're on the field, your opponent's monsters count as dragons. And uh, then once in your opponent's turn, you can equip a Destruction Sword monster from the graveyard to a Buster Blader monster on your side of the field. Great for your lockdown plays. Um, for other Synchro 8s, I play Void Ogre Dragon. A Bills of Diabolical Dragons. Uh, I had Crimson Blader in my last play because I knew I was coming up against quite a lot of Blue Eyes and uh, a couple of other decks that they played in my locals. So obviously, if I could get that out and go off, um, I'll obviously stop in all the Blue Eyes coming out. 
I then play one Hot Red Dragon Arc Fiend Abyss. Uh, once again, with the Buster Dragon plays, getting more than one out in one turn, I can then also use them to go into Hot Red Dragon Arc Fiend Abyss. This card has been fantastic. Even in my Brilliant Fusion build, um, this card was one of the main cards I, could, I would go into. It's just too good when it's that easy to summon in this deck. Uh, for my XYZs, I play one Big Eye, one Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon uh, for the rank 7 plays. Um, pretty standard stuff, you know, with uh, what they do. It's a great, once again, great for stalling because you can just burn them away. Now for the, uh, I only play one rank 8 monster and that's Hope Harbinger Dragon. So like I said, three Buster Dragons in one turn. Overlay into Hope Harbinger, get yourself some spell protection and his general effect. Everyone, everyone knows what this does. It's played in blue eyes. It's just a great card to go with. Now for fusions, um, I'll start off with this one. Beast Eyes Pendulum Dragon. Having the Kink Boyo being able to bring back um, the Destruction Sword cards is great. And like I said, if you're in a bit of a tight situation, which I have been in a couple of times, this card has been brilliant when I've drawn King Boyo. Bring back the card, go into him, and I've had enough attack power to go over stuff, and um, quite often this card has set me up to get ready for the game win, and this has been great. I then play three of the Buster Blade of Fusion. I've seen quite a few deck profiles that play two at most. Um, with how often you can pull him out, oh, three is just in my opinion, needed. Um, yes, it's true, he can't attack directly, but once he's on the field of your Buster Dragon, your opponent's monsters can't do anything because they count as dragons, and while he's on the field, dragon monsters are turned to defense mode and can't activate effects. He is just too good not to have it free, especially with the current format the way it is. Um, and then for every dragon on your opponent's side of the field and graveyard, he gains a thousand attack and defense. My last card for the extra deck, Dark Paladin. There is no reason not to play this with this deck. The fusion card can bring him out. Obviously you have several bus player options. This is why I play King of the Swamp. He is, um, obviously can go into the other fusions, but this one obviously is the main bread and butter for him. Um, this card obviously, everyone remembers what he does. He gains 500 attack and defense for every dragon. So he gets quite powerful, but he also stops spe spell cards. Fantastic card. Oh, We'll probably always have this card in a Buster Blade deck, and uh, especially as Dark Magician is currently played, you can use your opponent's Dark Magician as well. Um, the only other thing I will talk about, um, which is an interesting choice um, that I played uh, Dale with, was a Jama Trio. This is just the only card I'm going to show you from my side deck. Now, as I said with the play of having Buster Dragon and the Fusion and Monsters going to defense mode, and counting as dragons, this is an automatic 3k boost to your fusion monster. So it's a nice boost, but he also pierces. So not only are you attacking into a monster that's only got a thousand defense, you're hitting him for a lot of damage and then you're doing to the token damage as well. Um, it was just a little tech I put in. I'd seen some people suggest it, but in a slightly different format of deck. Um, so I decided to test it out. Obviously you lock down your opponent's field a bit more because they have less space to summon stuff. You run over their monsters, uh, run over the uh, tokens though with that combination on field and it just locks down. Absolutely brilliant. Um, as, as some of you may have seen the duel between me and Dale, this really, um, not stuffed him, but it couldn't put him on the back leg for a little while. Obviously, if you have watched the duel, you do see Dale win. Um, I'm not bitter about it, <laughs> but um, it was a fantastic duel. It was a good stall. He just you know, pulled the right cards when he needed them. Um, but yeah, that is the Buster Blazer deck profile for now. I'm always tweaking it. So if I um, tweak it a bit more and we get a, uh, get a bit more uh, result out of it, I'm more than happy to show you what I do with an update. Um, but thanks to Zephyr Wargames for doing the deck profiles. Um, myself and one of the other guys that plays at our locals uh, have our own Facebook channel, which we are looking to do a bit more Yu-Gi-Oh stuff as well. Not only are we looking at doing deck profiles, but we're looking at general openings. Um, we will always plug each other. <laughs> we love the Zephyr stuff. Um, but no, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And I'll pass you back to Dale. I'm trying to see your top. It's over 9,000, guys. <laughs> it's over 9,000. Uh, so that was uh, Danny's Buster Blader deck profile. And obviously, quite a few of you had asked for that. 
So we have got that up for you. Uh, apologies it took so long. He is a very busy, busy, busy man to try and pull down. Um, so I hope you liked it. I hope this helps. Obviously Danny is there and he is kind of like the local master of Buster Blade that he knows. He probably knows more about it than the rest of us do. So if you do have any questions, put them in the comments below um, and he'll see them or I'll pass them along to him. Um, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. And as always, guys, happy dogging. If you like that video, why not check out our other videos available? We've got more deck profiles, pack openings, and of course, duels. And don't forget to click on the most important button of all, that subscribe button, right in the bottom left-hand corner. So thanks for watching this video. We hope you can join us for more. And as always, happy dueling, guys.